Okay. Can yeah. you guys see me okay? I know yeah. I've got funky lighting, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have Courtney Calloway, Chelsea John, Olivia Brown here. Hopefully, Ramey can join us. Ramey Hendrickson can join us here in a couple minutes. She's coming from a, a doctor's appointment. And so she might be a couple minutes late. And Courtney is jetting off to an appointment here in a couple minutes too. Um, so Courtney, do you end up canceling one? Oh, <laughs> so okay. Good. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about what we've gleaned from this the last couple weeks, few weeks, I should say, of readings. Who wants to? go first and share their thoughts and what they've, the takeaways they have. I had a really hard time making it short. I don't know about you guys, but there was just so much. Like in chapter five, I got it pulled up. But like in chapter five, where he, where God talks about his experience with his teacher, Mr. Gilbert, I also positively love that. Do you remember that part where he talked about how um, Mr. Gilbert, like he generally cared for his students. He would talk about the subjects that they were interested in and conversate with them. And then when Goddard made a mistake with Trigg, instead of being like, oh, you did this all wrong, and be like hypercritical, he came to me and he was like, wow, I'm, in all my years of teaching, I've never seen someone do this, it this way before. So instead of just like making him feel bad because he messed up, he was just like giving him credit for his creativity. And I was like, that's exactly what a good teacher is. <laughs> That's the epitome of a great teacher. <laughs> like, focusing on the strengths of the student instead of, oh, well, you messed this up. Oh, you messed that up. Like, I hate that. Like, I've had a few teachers and instructors that are that way. And it's just, it's, it makes being in class and going to school miserable. And especially when you're in college. You're just like, do I really have to pay for this crap to be treated like that? What? No. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> So, I don't know, I just really loved that experience and learning different ways about how to engage the audience, like the three elements, relevance, respect, and participation. And then in chapter four, how it broke up the principles and instruction into, how many was it? One, two, three, four, five different things to use. And I just thought it was pretty cool. Like, there's so much, so much goodness. <laughs> so much goodness. <laughs> Yeah, I, mine, mine definitely, my outline went, I'm almost at three pages now. Um, so I understand what you're saying about keeping it short, for sure. It um, can be a challenge. I'm trying to condense this one, so I keep going over stuff and be like, do I need to include that? Because, like, the last one was, like, so long, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's okay though. I think it's okay if it's a little longer. <laughs> yeah, my outline has definitely gone on to three pages. And <laughs> yeah. Because it's hard when there's like two chapters a week that you want to glean as much from it. Yeah. Totally. Right. My internet has been awful today. And I've had a migraine all morning, so if I don't oh, make sense, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Migraine. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and my kids both have low-grade fevers, so it's been a fun day. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> this is just a hard day all around for everybody. I, <laughs> I, but um, I guess I can share some of the main points from my outline, I guess, just a few from each chapter that I got here. Um, I really liked, I think it was, I just kind of combined each lesson, so I don't know whether it was in, can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> I don't know whether it was in chapter four or chapter five, but when it um, talked about different like teaching styles, and I like that it says to make sure the stories we use actually relate to the audience. It used the example of if you're teaching parents of small children, don't use an example of dealing with teenagers. Like that's not going to help them. They can imagine, but actually like help them apply it to their own life. Use a story that will apply to their own life. 
Um, and I really liked the different formulas that it gave of like relevance, respect, and participation, and humility. And that the um, humility, compassion, and positivity is the formula to get your heart right for teaching and facilitating and preparing and all that. Um, ooh, I also like that it says if somebody asks a question, that you can like turn it back over to the group and say, what do you guys think about this? So then it's not like I thought that was a great way to show respect for your participants, realizing that not everyone there is just completely dumb and doesn't know anything, you know, like they know how each other learn. Yeah, they have valuable um, knowledge that they can give as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I liked the guidance that it gave for family councils. Similar guidelines could be adapted for like our workshops and stuff, like what they want on the agenda. But you could just make sure that there's ample opportunity for everyone to address concerns and feelings and thoughts and that everyone respects each other's thoughts and opinions. Um, um, it reminded me of that quote, I think it was Elder Holland that said that you can't um, convert somebody beyond your own conversion. So if you don't know the material yourself, you can't teach it to other people. And if you don't know how to apply it yourself, you can't teach it to other people. You know, and just, so you have to know your material yourself and you have to know yourself as a person to, to be able to share that your person with somebody else, which is the most effective way to teach instead of just relaying information. And I'm pretty sure that was the gist of my favorite parts of my outline. Um, I just, I really got a lot out of it. It was funny. I tried to like add in-depth thoughts after each note that I took, but I really felt like each note that I took was in-depth <laughs> because I felt that there's lots of um, meaning and depth in the reading itself. And I, I appreciated this batch of reading. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like there's been a lot of really applicable takeaways from these chapters. Um, when you were talking about the uh, can't convert past your own conversion. Um, <laughs> Um, oh my goodness, I had a thought and I just totally left my brain. Oh, it made me think of, um, as well, hey, we have that exact same little zebra horse thing. Um, it made me think of yesterday, Chelsea and I, so Chelsea and I were trying to figure out how to do the practice teaching thing um, that we're supposed to do this week. And we talked to Sister Openshaw in our console and she ended up being like, oh, no, you don't have to do that together. You just do that individually. And so we changed our plan. But in our original plan, we were each going to, like, record and, like, mash it together and, like, make it work and play it for a group. Anyway, and so I was recording my piece. And um, along those same lines, I realized that um, just practicing what you're planning on teaching is so important because I did, like, 25 takes of this five minutes of me teaching um, because I would stumble over my words and I thought, oh, I actually don't understand that as clearly as I want to. I have to go back and, you know, really learn it so that I can teach it clearly and so forth. Anyway, so I definitely found that to be true in practice to the, uh, this week. Um, for me, I'm going to just, hold on really fast before I jump into mine, I'm going to check the discussion board and make sure that Ramey isn't trying to contact us or anything, and I'll check my email. Just a second. It's loading. Okay. Doesn't look like it. She must have gotten held up at the doctor. Um, so this week, some of my main takeaway, or the, this last couple weeks, this outline, um, some of my main takeaway is were um, in chapter, oh, it was actually in the Teaching the Gospel manual, and it was talking about organizing your lesson plan. 
um, it talks about how you're almost always going to have less time to teach than you expect. There's always probably going to be things you're going to have to cut out. Um, and so that was, you know, three weeks ago that we read that. And, and so as we were doing our lesson plan, I tried to think, you know, what are things that we can leave out? Um, which things are important, but less important. Um, and that was just kind of an important, <laughs> I'm using the word important a lot. That was an important uh, process to go through, I think, as we prepared our lesson plan. And I'm glad that I kind of read that. Um, also, just an example, when we were reading about in chapter six about structuring um, our discussions, I thought of this example of poor structuring that I saw a couple weeks ago in a Relief Society lesson, actually. It was one of the council meetings, and the um, teacher or the facilitator, the discussion facilitator of the council meeting, who was the Relief Society president, she um, opened up the discussion by saying, you know, we want everybody's input and uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas and whatever they might be. And then she presented a question and I can't remember exactly what the question was. She presented a question and a sister um, raised her hand and gave an answer. And our very well-meaning Relief Society president, of course, not at all meaning to offend her or anything, said said something along the lines of, well, that's not exactly what we're looking for. Um, and then went to a different question and the sister ended up standing up and walking out and it was like this big deal and it was, um, you know, awkward. And, um, and I thought, as I was reading that about structuring, I thought, you know, if that really study president maybe had structured her question a little differently, perhaps that wouldn't have been the result. Um, and so that was just a application that I thought of as, as doing the reading this week. Um, but my biggest takeaway and something that was kind of exciting is I was doing the reading for this week and I'm doing chapter nine on um, teaching um, marriage. I can't remember now the name of the chapter, but since we're doing a marriage workshop, Chelsea and I, I thought that was probably the best one to do this week. And they talk about in there, they talk about the marital virtues perspective, which is the work of Blaine Fowler's. And I have one of his studies um, or her studies now that I look at it. Maybe that's a female. Um, actually, it's most likely a female. Her studies, I have that included in our lit review and in our lesson plan. Um, and we're going to talk about um, in improving communication kind of at the end of our workshop. I have this whole section about improving your character. Um, from this Fowler's research. And so then the chapter was talking about it and they included a quote from her that was just so perfect. And I was like, this fits into our lesson plan so well. And so I pulled it over into our lesson plan. Um, and so talk about something being applicable. It was like directly applicable. I just was like, this is perfect. Copy paste. Um, and the the quote is, as I have observed many different couples, I have become convinced that strong marriages are built on the virtues or character strengths of the spouses. In other words, the best way to have a good marriage is to be a good person. Um, and that just perfectly ties in with the improving your character research that we already have in our lesson plan. So that was just kind of a, a perfect little nugget takeaway that I had this week. Yeah, I had kind of a similar thing, like, so I've gone through a couple different, like, parenting classes, I guess, and one of my classes I've gone through, it's called the GROW program, and, um, <clears throat> I don't know what my book is, it was given, like, this workbook, and there's a, I want to say, 12 weeks of lessons in there, and it's just, it takes it week by week and going over different themes. Well, anyways, in the back of it is a whole list of like modulation activities. And I was like, oh my goodness, I could possibly use some of these because we're talking about um, 
ways with coping with stress for parents who have like kids with special needs. And so I was like, these are like totally something that I could use. Some of these modulation activities. I was like, hallelujah. <laughs> because not only can the parents do it, but then the parents can do it with their kids and it can become like a fun um, experience for like when they're stressed out to have that build up a relationship instead of like tear it down by yelling. You do something fun with your kid, like hot cocoa breathing or um, there's one thing I like to do with my daughter as well as um, birthday candles. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's like deep breathing, but like you act like your fingers are birthday candles and you can use as many as you need and you breathe it in and then you blow out the candle and put your finger down and then do it. And so I was like, that's cool. like a lot of the stuff like I've already learned, I'm able to put into our list and planning, which is kind of neat. I'm excited to do the actual teaching. I'm just not enjoying this um, building up to a part. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, by the way, speaking of your lesson plan, I don't know if you saw it, but I gave some feedback on the Google Doc. Did you? I'll have to check it out. Just so you know. So that's there. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I was going to share like one other thing, one other quote that I really, really liked. It's in chapter five. And I had to go back through the book and find it. So that's what I was looking for a second away. I was like, there's something else. Where, where was it? But it, this says, in LFLE, it is very helpful for the participants and educator alike to believe in a view of the person as unlimited and what it can become. It's helpful because you're already dealing with a participant who may be discouraged and has lost conviction about becoming anyone worthwhile. In such a situation, it is necessary to hold out a view of life that is extreme enough in its opposition that to the client's view to be able to serve as the needed corrective. I thought that was like so true because like oftentimes when people are coming to a workshop, especially, you know, possibly a marriage one or coping with stress, like they are feeling defeated and you don't want to make them feel more defeated. You want to be that positive, you can do this, like it's okay, like let me help you kind of like give you steps, like focus on your strengths. I really like to like try. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> we agree. Totally. Sorry, I've been muted to save you all from my kids screaming. <laughs> no, I've, so I've been nodding and trying to like be active with my face. I don't know if you can tell any of my thoughts with my face, <laughs> but I really liked what um, the different quotes that you both shared, and I think that it's just great when you find things in your learning that are actually applicable immediately <laughs> and not just like, oh, this will be nice sometime down the road or, oh, nice to see that research back something that I already thought, but like, <laughs> oh, no wait, I can actually use it. And I do feel like the reading this past, you know, the last three lessons or whatever have been really applicable. Of course, in this whole class, it's all really applicable because we need it all. But, but it's been nice to be able to actually apply it to our own lesson plans and things like that. Totally. And I took last semester, I was in um, the developing psych lifespan and research methods. Um, I'm in research methods this semester. And <laughs> And like those two classes together, like so much reading, like so, so much reading that, um, that these chapters, I like, I'm like, I feel like I, I'm like, oh, I must be like a fourth of the way through. And then it's like the end. And I was like, oh, that's so great. <laughs> it's like so yeah. great. <laughs> that's how it is from my, cause I'm in, I'm taking research methods and then family 100 and family 100 has the most reading out of any of my classes. And it is the lowest credit class. Oh my god, so crazy. There's so much reading. <laughs> I was going to take research methods this semester, but it was too much reading to do with this class and my other nine credits besides those. So, research methods is the only class I have left next semester. <laughs> yeah. I thought, personally, I thought that was the most challenging class of the degree research yeah. methods was for me. Um, most because I, my teacher wasn't phenomenal. Who um, was your teacher? I can't remember now his name. Uh, I can't remember, but I'll I'll post it in our Google Doc or something. I'll find it. But yeah, we didn't uh, had kind of a hard time, and he had some things going on. Like his 
his father passed away and his father-in-law during the semester. Wow. And so he had some hard things going on too. So, I mean, he was a great guy, but just not, not a teacher that was great for me. Um, or anyway. And so that was a hard, that was a tough class. So yeah, how, I've, I've, I've been in it twice now. Oh, have you? <laughs> Dropped it yeah. like the last day before yeah. getting a W or whatever each time. Cause I'm like, I just can't with my other course load. So yeah. So yeah, I took you a class. That's a great one to take by itself. Yeah. And she ended up failing me, giving me an F on my final paper, which made me not pass the class. Which, I which class? I did the points. I had all straight A's. And then the final paper where you turn everything in, she failed it. And I'm like, what? That doesn't make sense. But she, she was like extremely frustrated because I don't know how your guy was, but with her, <clears throat> Your research topic had to do with academics. Yeah. It had to evolve around academics. And so I was struggling to find a topic that I could get behind because every topic I had, she's like, oh, that's already been researched too much. Oh, this, oh, this, oh, this. And so like every idea I had that I wanted to research and find out about, she was like shutting me down. So then I ended up finding something that I didn't even care about and trying to make it work. But this semester, my teacher, is amazing and she's like it can be any life question you have that can be backed by psychological research and i'm like hallelujah <laughs> so mine's on um i can't say it right equine therapy and autism awesome so yeah because i have a my oldest son is well both of my boys are autistic but my oldest one he's more severe than his brother so I'm trying to look at different like options and that's one thing that's always been interested in me and I was like is it really worth all that money so <laughs> I find out the psychological research behind figuring out if it actually works <laughs> that's great yeah she seems like a great teacher she is and she gives such great feedback like I love it like she is like so involved like she's like okay well if you're struggling I have all this time and I can talk to you one-on-one -on -one. Like I was actually supposed to talk with her last night about my research topic and where I'm planning on going. And it was gonna be one-on-one, -on -one, just me and her, so she could help me out. And she called right as soon as I had left the doctor's office. And my mind was whirling. And I'm like, I just left the doctor's office and I just got all this information and all these new diagnoses. And like, my mind is whirling. And she's like, I'm so sorry. She's like, I have this, this, and this day. Which one works good for you? She's like, I really wanna talk to you. And I'm like, you know what? You truly care. You care about your students. <laughs> so it was like really like helpful and I was really humbled so yeah what's her name um night so find her next semester Chelsea <laughs> find her. she's amazing she is yeah. so sweet and she's so helpful I'm gonna, yeah, 